Hey fellow Vault Warriors, it's Angry Turtle and today I go over my experience build the uh, recent iteration because next season is coming tomorrow so I do hope that nothing changed and I will be able to grind a scoreboard just by grinding experience. Will that be still available? Let's hope so. But anyway, this is my build and as well. If you want to double whatever experience you will see I can get, you can do it on a team. And you will get easy twice as much. Maybe even quadruple the experience with uh, recent stuff and how the experience works. I will uh, put a custom link to my last live stream uh, with exact timestamp when we're doing it on a team. So you can, you can see yourself what I mean. Now, this build. Of course, I'm endgame player as you can see my level, so the build has everything. But you don't really need everything. I will, I will just mention the stuff that is important for experience purposes and for speed. So, intelligence must be maxed out on your special distribution. And then, on top of that, you must have additional intelligence legendary card. So that's 20 intelligence to start with, thanks to that. Other stuff, not so important. Even detonation contagion. I have it in here, but to be honest, from my testing, you will get one additional kill every two to three minutes. Not really cutting it, but yeah, if I if I want every single possible point, I will put it in. Now, the perks themselves, uh, I will ignore all the carry weight. That's because I have so much stuff. Maybe you don't, so then you don't need all the carry weight stuff. But experience related and speed related, so. Night person under perception give you extra intelligence at night. Concentrated fire to kill enemies faster. Killing in vats is the fastest way to kill enemies. Especially taking our weapon is Elder's Mark and it need to be for the best effect. Fire in the hole so I can see where I'm throwing the Nuka grenades. Grenadier so they have great radius. I do have only one master commando. It's not really make or break it with bloodied and vats. You don't need weapon specific, you will still kill. Especially that with the weapon, I only need to have six kills total in West Tech every run. Then those are grenades. So I don't really need to focus too much on the commando stuff. I don't even have a tank killer, which would be handy to have. You can consider that if you have more points for perception. Now, endurance. The important stuff is campfend, so berimentats last twice as long. And fireproof, so you're less likely to die from your own grenade. Uh, their Charisma Inspirational is a must. Tenderizer is helpful, but really, Inspirational strength in numbers, those two are essential. Intelligence to boost your damage, Nerd Rage and Demolition Expert, those are essential. And fill with whichever perks you want. You must have 15 Intelligence, so you'll have room here, as only Demolition and Nerd Rage are essential. Under Agility, we do need Escape Artist. That improves our speed and recloaking greatly. Adrenaline, max out for damage. For luck, bloody mess for damage with grenades. And class freak, in case you don't want to use serum. Class freak is not essential if you will be popping serums. Now, the gear, the setup, a little bit over the buffs. I have a full guide how to maximize experience with all the buffs. So I will only cover like essential here related to the build the most. Now... I renamed my Elder's Mark into New Canade Mark. What is that? It's bloodied with armor penetration from the uh, record, no, armor piercing receiver. That's what gives 60% armor penetration. I don't know if this will always be like that, but in the moment I'm making this video, bloodied carry over to the grenade, armor penetration from weapon carry over to the grenade. That's why Elder's Mark. It could be regular Tommy Gun, would work the same, but Tommy Gun has slightly less damage, so I will be using it. Therefore, I don't want to keep swapping the weapon. This time around, I'm not swapping the weapon, so I'm killing with Tommy Gun, and I'm tossing grenades with this Tommy Gun Elder's Mark. About the armor, that's important. All pieces unyielding with plus one intelligence. It's a total mix, because I was hunting this set a long time ago, and I was basically buying. Whatever was unyielding and intelligence, and I managed to collect five pieces. Therefore, at low health, I have extra 
20 intelligence. That's a zap, like 20 base, 20 added from armor. We are already at 40 and we just started. And now, apparel, again, carry weight, so I do have a backpack for that. But important part, casual under armor of any type with shielded lining, that's free intelligence added. Intelligence equals experience, so we want to add whatever intelligence we can. Then there are camp buffs, of course. Camp buffs are a bed from sleeping and mechanical derby game, extra intelligence. So those are essential camp buffs and of course all the food that you need to cook to boost it even more. Mutations. Mutations will interact with food, so obviously adrenal reaction for more damage at low health. Unless you don't want to do damage, but that will be the case if you play on a full team, as then only one person needs to do damage. But the point. Egghead. Extra intelligence. A lot. Eight. And herd mentality. Extra free intelligence. So that's already a lot of intelligence from mutations. After that... The buffs. The buffs from 8 are the Bobblehead Leader. Bobblehead Leader and Live and Love number 3. Issue number 3. 50% healing from veggies and fruits. And how do I have so much? Someone gave it to me. I didn't ask how they get it. I accept it. So that's how I have so much. I gave away probably second 300, so there was more. But if you cannot be lucky and no one will give it to you, try to look in players' vendors or just farm them in the world, which is the hardest way. Now, food and drink. Assuming you are a herbivore, you will be looking for brain bombs for 8 intelligence. And 8 is before the magazine, so it will be more. And cranberry relish for 25 experience. More with magazine. I don't know if my is still running. I'm pretty sure I need to pop everything. So I will apply the buffs and I will show you how it looks like. But first, temporary buffs when we'll be jumping into the combat are Berimentats. This lasts 10 minutes and give you extra 5 intelligence. And I would almost forgot to mention the most important buff, lunchbox. You can have up to 4 open, which will double your experience, so that's rewarded. And, again, there is more. I almost forgot. There are two camp allies that you can use. One is from the shrine, and one is Leo, when you give him Nuka cola Cranberry. And, as well, Nuka cola Twist have a chance to give you extra intelligence. So, you can grab those, too. Lastly, for experience farming, we always go to West Tech Research Center. The reason for that is the best place to farm experience. There is no better one. And now inside the West Tech, I will show you this solo, because unfortunately most of us do not always have friends at hand to join and farm with them. Although I encourage, if you can, to organize that. And you can see now amount of experience, 2300 per single super mutant. That's full boost, 76 intelligence. It will be 77, I think, if we get one more stack from a teammate. Casual team, oh that's what I didn't mention casual team for the best result and now we are tossing grenades and you will be able to see how crazy it is going so one grenade over there run away that's 11k experience one grenade over here run away and we get another 16k so we have around 30k from grenades that's not counting the kills before and last grenade in here, I would normally rush into the basement, but for purpose of this video, that's done. It shows 11k, but it will be second half after my level up animation. So that's sometimes deceiving. You would think that you didn't get a hit, but that's another 11k. So that's over 20. And this guy was following me somehow. There are some survivals, as you can see sometimes. There are some survivals. That's additional reason to go with a team. Then there is way less survivals. If you can get four people to follow it, you to follow you. Wow, that's some next level of insanity. But this is the build. This is the build. This is the amount of experience you can get. You should just keep in mind if you die, sleep buff will be erased. So you need to get the sleep buff back. But that's that's I think only 
the only buff that disappear if you die. All of them should remain. And as well, check the link down below if you want to see me farming with a team. I mean, teaching my team how to do it. And that being said, thank you a lot for your continued support and see you all in the next one.